Hello friends and welcome back to another Pokemon Guide here on the channel. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode we're going to be talking about everything to do with shiny hunting in the crown tundra so with the dlc's dropping just a day ago now we have a bunch of new pokemon and facilities to take advantage of and with those new pokemon and facilities there comes the opportunity to do some shiny hunting for probably the first time outside of the masuda method in sword and shield so we'll get into those couple of methods very soon but there are a few things that i would like to just mention before we get into today's guide now with the release of the crown tundra we obviously get a bunch of new pokemon and some of those pokemon are unfortunately shiny locked that means no matter what you do you're not going to be able to obtain these pokemon in the game and their shiny forms now these pokemon i'll throw them up on the screen for you right now they include the galarian birds which is zapdos articuno moltres you've got calyrex and the two steeds which are glastier and spectier you've got victini cosmog keldeo and poipol for some reason, they are all shiny locked. So you're not going to be able to obtain them at all in their shiny forms within the Sword and Shield games. Now, with that out the way, we can talk about the shiny methods that we've got available because every other Pokemon that is in the Crown Tundra is actually available in their shiny forms, meaning you can go out and try and shiny hunt them. So the first method we are going to discuss today is a quick method but it is quite a fun one and it has cut a lot of time on an old fashioned shiny method of hunting which was soft resetting and we're going to revisit the reggie temples because this is the primary place where you're going to be able to do this method now when you enter any reggie temple you're presented with a, a, a floor with panels of lights on now you either activate all the lights or you put in a code combination which will then activate a statue so when you approach it you can can initiate a battle with that said Reggie and the beauty about these Reggie battles is that you're going to be able to either run away at the start of the battle or just knock it out and then restart the process again and by starting the process again activating the floor lights or activating that cord of lights then you will activate a new spawn which will give you another chance of running into and encountering a shiny Reggie so this is the method it is a little bit of a glorified soft resetting method but it is a lot quicker than soft resetting closing your game down coming back in loading everything up this is a very quick method and probably about 10 times faster than soft resetting in all honesty especially if you're just running from the battle now i'm in the middle of shiny hunting for reggie alecki on my shield copy uh, so hopefully we can get that very soon i'm just knocking it out every time because it's just a little bit easier to mash the a button and knock it out and then just restart the process again obviously a lot of the other reggies are going to be a bit quicker Quicker because you don't have to put a set code in but the new exclusive Reggie's Reggie Drago and Reggie Alecki are the ones that probably a lot of you will be going for so if you haven't come across this method before I hope you find it useful and if you are hunting those Reggie's I hope you have a lot of luck with them let me know down in the comment section below if you've already got your shiny Reggie's or if you are currently hunting them or planning to in the future now getting into the second shiny hunting method in this guide we're going to be talking about Dynamax adventures now this centers around these Dynamax adventures and today we were lucky enough to get the official confirmation or at least as official as possible confirmation of the shiny hunting odds in the Dynamax adventures. So I believe the original tweet came from Cyrus M on Twitter so a big shout out to them for actually publishing this information and informing the community of the shiny hunting odds in Dynamax adventures but they have confirmed that the shiny hunting odds of getting a shiny in the Dynamax adventures for any of the Pokemon that you encounter on the route is going to be 1 in 300 which if you've got a shiny charm is then reduced to 1 in 100 which is incredible now we'll get to the stats and the odds in a moment but there are a few prerequisites we need to go through in regards to Dynamax adventures before we get into the beef of this content so dynamax adventures are a place where you can hunt the legendaries and ultra beasts in the crown tundra you're going to go through four battles in a total and you're going to have four opportunities to catch each one of these pokemon now i would recommend each time you do have the opportunity to catch a pokemon 
catch it because that is going to increase your odds of getting a shiny now the thing is with the dynamax adventures when you do go into battle against these pokemon they're not going to appear shiny in their dynamax battle so you will have to catch them and then check them at the very end of the dynamax adventure run to see if they're shiny or not this is why you want to catch them and getting back to the odds of if you've got a shiny charm it being one in a hundred for every single pokemon in there to be shiny then if you're dividing that by four four pokemon you've caught then it's going to be the odds of one in 25 of those pokemon could be shiny so your odds are significantly increased for dynamax adventures making shiny hunting very very easy and not as taxing as some other methods that we've seen in previous generations now before we get into this obviously we need to mention that there are version exclusives of the legendaries they're the main pokemon that you'll probably be shiny hunting in this dynamax adventure method now in pokemon sword you're going to have the exclusive pokemon of ho o -Oh, groudon latios Dialga, Reshiram, Tornadus, Xerneas and Sogaleo, whereas Shield will have the exclusive Pokemon of Lugia, Kyogre, Latias, Palkia, Zekrom, Thunderous, Eveltal and Lunala. But even though these Pokemon are exclusive to each Sword and Shield version, it doesn't mean because you've got Sword you will never be able to encounter the Pokemon that are exclusive to Pokemon Shield. Now the beauty about Dynamax Adventures is you can link up with three other players either online or you can link up with three NPCs. Now when you link up with three other players online, friends you know or just random people, then they may be hosting the Dynamax Adventure with a, an alternative copy to what you've got. So they may be hunting something like a Latias in Pokemon Shield whereas you've got a copy of Pokemon Sword if you join that max raid you're then going to be able to obtain the Latias at the end of that Dynamax adventure so and it works vice versa so if someone from Shield joins a Pokemon Sword copy and they're hunting Latios that they couldn't get in Shield they're then going to be able to obtain it in their Pokemon Shield copy so you get the idea I hope it makes sense you can get all the Pokemon that are available that have been released in the Crown Tundra on both versions you're just going to have to link up with players online or friends with alternative copies of the game to obtain these other Pokemon. And the other thing to mention is the biggest thing regarding Dynamax Adventures with these legendaries is per game you are only going to be able to catch these legendaries once. So if you've already caught a legendary, you're not going to be able to shiny hunt for that Pokemon. You're not even going to be able to catch that Pokemon again. You can go into a max raid adventure and battle this Pokemon, but you're not ever going to be able to have the option to throw a Pokeball at it or choose it at the end. Whereas if friends are linking up with you when you're hosting this, you've already caught it they will have the opportunity to catch this Pokemon as long as they haven't already caught it in their games. So there is that to consider as well. So be very careful if you're wanting to shiny hunt the legendaries, make sure that you don't catch them before you do start shiny hunting them. Now, if we just jump over to uh, where the max raid dens are located, you can come over to the map here and you can see that it is right next to the station on the slippery slope in the Crown Tundra. So right at the beginning of the Crown Tundra here. And once you're inside, you want to just approach this lady here. And then when you talk to her, what you can do is, yes, please, just say yes, please. You might want to find some other Pokemon that you've come across. So I've already previously come across Celestila and Zerkatry. So these are paths that are saved. If you catch a Pokemon, unfortunately, because that Pokemon is no longer obtainable by you, it means the path is then deleted. So you want to just encounter the Pokemon, not catch it or not take it away. And then this path will be saved. So you'll have a long list. So then you can go online with friends and then you can make sure that you can shiny hunt this one over and over again. So you can always go for Celesteela or Zerkatry or what other ever legendaries that you've got in your game. So once you go into it, you just start progress and uh, you will be presented by picking a rental Pokemon. So for this, we're not going to invite anyone, uh, but we do get the choice of one of three Pokemon. Now I'm going to go for the Persimian and then we'll let the computer just do the rest. So when you first enter the Dynamax adventure, you're going to be able to see the Pokemon at the top of the screen. It is going to be an electric type here. So you've got a couple of options what it could be. And then you can scroll up with your R controller 
and see the route or the best route that's going to be for your Dynamax adventure. So I think here we're going to go normal type as our first one. We've got a fighter and we've got a lot of, well, we've got steel, rock and another normal type. So it makes sense. But you can plan out your route as best as possible and then go for that route and uh, just make it a little bit easier for yourself. So we've got an explode up first and then uh, to, for the quickness of this guide, we're just going to come back to the end of each Dynamax battle. So it speeds everything up for us all. So there we go. The explode is taken care of. Now it's key to uh, be aware that every Pokemon in the Dynamax Adventures has a 100% catch rate. You cannot not catch a Pokemon if you throw a Pokeball at it. So for these, you can just get a bunch of just Pokeballs or you can use your favorite balls in case they are shiny um, and just make sure that you do catch every Pokemon. That is increasing your odds if you catch all four throughout the Dynamax Adventure from that 100 to 1 to 25 to 1, technically speaking. So uh, we want to swap it out, of course, and we'll take the Explode. So we'll move on. And where do we want to go next? We've got Dragon, Poison, Fire. Uh, let's go for Fire. Let's go Fire. Could have went Poison, but we'll go Fire for this one. We'll bump into an NPC along the way, and uh, they can share supplies with you if you're in need. So we can take one of these, um okay let's take a life orb this is quite nice it will depend and it'll vary on each route and what npc you come in contact with depending on what items and bonuses that you get throughout your run so once again we're going to just close off this and come back when we have beat this tall call okay so we've taken down the tall call now and we're gonna actually we've just fainted as well so that's one of our hearts lost you get four hearts throughout an entire max adventure run so you kind of want to avoid fainting especially early on we will catch the torkoal again just increasing our shiny chances uh, like i say if you've got the shiny charm if you haven't got the shiny charm it's worth catching them anyway because it is going to reduce your odds throughout this run and every run that you do so we get the torkoal and we are going to just switch it in because our Exploud has fainted. So it would make sense to, even though Exploud will still be able for us to use. And we will move on to our next one, which is the third and final one. We'll go for the Psychic because the ground is probably going to give us a little bit of an issue, especially with our Fire type here. So once again, we're going to just do this Max Raid battle. And like you can see as well, you know, the thing is, like I mentioned earlier, that you're never going to see these Pokemon in these Max Raid battles as shiny. They will never appear as shiny. So don't worry if you come across one and think, ah, oh, it's not, this one's not shiny. Let's just reset. Don't reset because you can't check until the very end. And I'm hoping through this example that I'm doing here on the channel that one of them maybe is shiny. That would be perfect. So we'll have to see. We'll get to the end and we'll see if they are or not. So, um... We're going to be moving last, so let's max and just max flare. Actually, max. If you are playing with NPCs, it's worth just maxing because none of your NPC characters will ever Dynamax. So when you've got the opportunity to Dynamax, just make sure you do take advantage of that. You're going to be getting a lot more damage on the board and you're going to be taking a lot less damage as well from the opposing Pokemon. Now, the third one in the flight is probably going to be more than likely the hardest one out of the whole run. So you know just be aware of that and it is obviously a lot easier with um live people real people online or friends that you're doing it with than the npc characters although i would say the npc characters in the dynamax adventures are a lot better than what you would see in the isle of armor just max raid battles or the 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 the, the wild area so again we'll uh, we'll just do this battle and we'll be right back when we we finish off this mushrana Okay, and this Max Flare should be the final hit, and it is. So we will catch the Mushurana. I don't think I'm going to switch it for Torkoal. You don't need to switch the Pokemon every time you do catch it. It will still be there at the end. You just need to make sure that you are catching each one as you go. On. And I know I'm repeating myself, but it is very important to just increase your odds throughout these Dynamax adventures. If you miss one, then your odds are going to be significantly lowered. It doesn't mean they are in general. It's just significantly lowered overall of actually getting one of them as a shiny. The odds are still going to be 100 to 1 for each individual Pokemon, but we're reducing that down because of the amount of Pokemon we're catching throughout each run, if that makes sense. So we're at the final 
um, Dynamax Raid now and we'll be able to see which Pokemon this is. And it is, it is Zerkatry actually. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, now we do have the route for Zerkatry already. We didn't choose to take it, but we've got the Zerkatry route regardless. So that is one of the Ultra Beasts. Now I would love Zerkatry as a shiny. So if this is a shiny, that would be incredibly good. Um, I would be forced to catch it. So it would mean I wouldn't be able to uh, to do any streams and uh, try and do shiny hunting with Zerkatry. But I do have a copy of Sol uh, Shield, so I would be able to do that on there as this is my sword copy. Now, hopefully we can actually beat this Zerkatry because Zerkatry is a pretty beasty Pokemon. And if it's got Tail Glow, it's going to be very difficult to beat. So let's hope it doesn't as we do get some nice damage onto it. And Torkoal doing some decent damage as well, especially with that Life Orb. Um, now, we will just skip ahead and uh, come back when hopefully we have beat the Zerkatry. So, oh, very close. Okay, so unfortunately, we weren't actually able to beat the Zerkatry, which is pretty sad. Now, it started getting the, the, the beast boosts and everything kind of went pear-shaped from there. Now, if we'd caught the Zerkatry, it would appear in this screen right now in the list. So, you can check if these are shiny or not by just clicking Check Summary. And then going into the Pokemon and you should be able to see if any of them are shiny um, if you can't tell from their appearance first off. Now this is where you are checking if you have got any shinies. Obviously I haven't got any shinies in this bunch of Pokemon here. So we've not been the luckiest this time. But then again we can repeat this as I'm not going to take anything this time. You can take Pokemon if you want. You don't necessarily need to take any Pokemon, but if there is a Pokemon there that you need for your Pokedex or anything like that, then you can take one. So that will do that, but we can hunt Zerkatry, and even if we do get the Zerkatry there, we catch it. We just don't pick it if it's not shiny, and then you, you will save the route like you will with any legendary that you encounter that you do not catch, and uh, then you'll be able to go back into that route and try and catch it again so that is that method wrapped up like i say it is a really fun way to shiny hunt you've got incredible odds to actually get shinies within this method and the fact that you can do it with friends or just random people online to make it easier is a very unique uh, opportunity for us and there is one thing to just mention as well if you are shiny hunting these legendaries you can you so you've got your you're hosting a a raid for say a Zerkatry. Now you can catch that Zerkatry and the three friends that you've got along with you can catch that Zerkatry. Just because you get it as a shiny doesn't mean that they'll get it as a shiny. You've all got separate odds. So one of your friends could get it as a shiny and the other three couldn't. Two of you could and the other two couldn't. If you get my gist. So it's not a guaranteed shiny every time. It is down to the individual catching it. This is why you have to get to that end point and then check yourself. If you've got it as a shiny, then you just catch it, keep it, and then that's that. You won't be able to catch it or hunt it again in the game, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, that is it. Literally it. I think I've mentioned everything that I wanted to in the guide today, so I hope it's useful for you. And uh, like I say, I will be streaming uh, these are max adventure raids and doing a bunch of shiny hunting so keep an eye out for when that will uh, start and i'll make sure to post the schedule on the the comment section of the channel so if you want to join in and uh, try and do some shiny hunting for these legendaries with me like i say i've got a sword and a shield copy so we'll be going through each and every one of these legendaries at some point so if you can join in and uh, help me grind through them that would be a lot of fun so Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hope you found it useful. Uh, if you have, as always, please remember to drop a like on the video. It does really help out the channel. And uh, if you're new to the channel, do consider subscribing for more of this sort of content and other Pokemon content that we do here. And uh, like I said, if you've had success already in the Crown Tundra getting any shinies, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear if you've had success and what those shinies have been. And uh, we'll leave it there and I'll see you all for another video very soon. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.